BYU defeated teams like Tennessee, USC, and Boise State in 2019. But they lost to teams like South Florida, Toledo, San Diego State, and Hawaii. Consistency is the key for the Cougars. Can they figure it out? Welcome back to the Gridiron Expert, the best kept secret in all of college football. Today, bringing you our 2020 BYU Cougars College Football Predictions. As always, make sure to continue to like, comment, subscribe, and share our videos, as well as check out everything down in the description below, where you can get exclusive content on our website, thegridironexpert.com, as well as follow us on our social media pages over on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. So yes, in 2019, BYU was pretty inconsistent. The Cougars started off 2-4, won five straight games, but dropped their final two to San Diego State and then to Hawaii in a heartbreaking defeat in their bowl game. Kalani Satake enters his fifth year in Provo with a 27-25 overall record, meaning 2020 is a very big year for him. This is a very big year for this Cougars program. Can they maybe play a little more consistent and maybe have a very special 2020 season? The roster says they certainly can, as they return eight starters on the offensive side of the ball and have three very capable quarterbacks to lead this offense. The edge more than likely goes to Zach Wilson, just slightly. He had over 2,300 yards, 11 touchdowns, and nine interceptions but did miss four games last year, which means that Baylor Romney and Jaron Hall both got plenty of playing time and playing experience, legitimate playing experience, in 2019. BYU has three quarterbacks at their disposal in 2020, which is huge for this program. Their whole offensive line returns. That's always a plus. And they do return their tight end, Matt Bushman, who is arguably one of the better tight ends in all of college football, has over 650 receiving yards last year to go along with four touchdowns, and that is huge considering that BYU loses their top three wide receivers from last season. So Bushman is going to be not only a great blocker, but also a primary pass catcher for whoever is under center for BYU offensively until they can quickly build chemistry with their other wide receivers. Defensively, along with consistency, defense is the key for BYU in 2020. They do return seven starters from a unit that only allowed 25.5 points per game. But they've got to really improve across the board, more so up front. The Cougars were 117th in the country last year when it came to sacks per game. Their pass rush was basically non-existent. And with a brutal first stretch of the season, first four games, they're going to need that defense and that pass rush to step up, especially when they're going up against very dangerous quarterbacks. The linebacking core will be strong for the Cougars this year. They had 10 interceptions combined in 2019. That core is going to be led by Peyton Wilger, who led the team with three interceptions. So this BYU defense has the talent. We know they can score points offensively. Can the defense just step up a little bit and maybe get them a few wins that maybe not many people are projecting them to get? We take a look at their schedule here, guys. It's very, very favorable. With the exception of these first four games, which is an absolutely brutal stretch, the rest is favorable for BYU. So the chance for maybe an eight, maybe if they pull off an upset, nine-win season is not out of the question for the team out of Provo. We start with Utah here. Of course, the Holy War. Big-time in-state rivalry game, one that Utah has dominated. They've won nine straight against the Cougars, BYU's last win against the Utes came back in 2009. Last year, BYU at home lost to Utah 30-12. 30-12. And now the Utes lose a lot of pieces, guys. They lose their star quarterback in Tyler Huntley. They lose their star running back in Zach Moss from a team that was one win away from making the college football playoff last year. They lose a lot of people defensively. Only two starters back for the Utes. So many might say that's a sign that BYU is going to go into Salt Lake City and they're going to pull off this upset. I don't think it's going to happen. 
Utah did a great job utilizing the transfer portal. They've got some great wide receivers. They've got a capable quarterback in Jake Bentley, the transfer from South Carolina, or maybe they go with Cameron Rising at quarterback. Regardless, Kyle Whittingham and his squad are not going to fall off the face of the earth. They're not going to completely tank in 2020. And I think at home, they extend the winning streak to 10 over BYU. They are 0-1 on the season. Not what you want to see, but once again, this first four stretch is very tough, guys. Last year, BYU opened up the season against four straight Power 5 teams as well. But instead of having three of those four games on the road, three of those four games were at home, and BYU won two of them. They were 2-2. Two and two. Start off the season 2-2. Two and two. So, week two, they come back home. They face off against Michigan State. Win. We're giving them a win. Why do we quickly write off the Spartans? We don't necessarily mean to, but when you look at Michigan State across the board, guys, they're one of the teams that definitely is going to be hurt the most from not having spring practice. Because Mark D'Antonio left early February, well past many of the teams had signed a brand new head coach. Kind of gave Michigan State a horrible advantage there. They were able to get Mel Tucker away from Colorado. He steps in, a month on the job, COVID hits. They don't know who their quarterback's going to be. The defense isn't going to be that great. They have three returning starters on that side of the ball. So Michigan State is in a bind going into 2020. They're going to be very intriguing because maybe they exceed expectations or maybe they do very, very bad considering all the circumstances. Considering they don't have that much talent this year and considering they didn't have enough time with a brand new coaching staff to build things up. With the game being out west, I like the Cougars' chances. I think they take advantage of that. They defeat the Spartans. They then travel down to Arizona to take on the Sun Devils and Herm Edwards. Here they will be taking on one of the better quarterbacks in the entire Pac-12, Jaden Daniels. Only four starters return offensively for the Sun Devils, but they do return seven defensively from a unit that did only allow 22.4 points per game. This is an Arizona State team, guys, that could very well contend to win the Pac-12 South in 2020, and BYU is not going to be able to pull off this win on the road. Daniels has the quarterback edge over all three quarterbacks at BYU right now. I love Herm Edwards a little bit more than Kalani Satake right now. They have the home field advantage. All signs point to a win for me for the Sun Devils and a loss on the road at Minnesota as well. A Minnesota team that if you don't pressure Tanner Morgan, he's going to make you pay. Remember, BYU, 117th in sacks per game last year, which means more than likely Tanner Morgan's going to have all the time in the world back in the pocket to find his top two wide receivers and Rashad Bateman and Chris Ottman-Bell to try to torch this BYU secondary. This is a Minnesota team that won 11 games last year as a college football playoff contender, and if they defeat Wisconsin, will make the Big Ten championship game. They are just that good. P.J. Fleck working miracles in Minnesota. They get a win over the Cougars, and they are 1-3. Remember, it's an absolutely brutal stretch, guys. You know, every year this happens. Every year we predict BYU to struggle out of the gate, and people say, no, that's ridiculous. They're not going to start 1-3. and three. They're not going to start 2-2. Two and two. They're going to start 4-0 and oh or 3-1. and one. we got to be realistic. I'd love to see it happen. I'd love to see the Cougars prove me wrong. But this is a very, very brutal stretch. Three difficult places to play all on the road. we got the Cougars starting 1-3, and three, and I think that is extremely realistic. The schedule lightens up, though, guys. They're 1-3, and three, their next four, all at home, with the exception of Northern Illinois. The game will be played at a neutral site in Illinois, but I'm not too worried about that game. We start here with Utah State. Win. Why do we give them a win over the Aggies? Last year, Utah State had a better team than they're going to have this year, and BYU went on the road and defeated the Aggies 42-14. to Yes, the Aggies return eight starters offensively, but they're missing the big one, and that's their quarterback in Jordan Love. Their defense allowed 30.7 points per game. After a rough start, after a rough quarter of the season or third of the season, expect BYU to put on some fireworks offensively, much like they did last year. They defeat the Aggies. They then take on Missouri out of the SEC. Now, this is an intriguing matchup here, guys. Very intriguing matchup. You know, it's not too often you see an SEC team travel out to Provo. So you look at Missouri here. They're bringing in a brand new head coach, Eli Drinkwitz, a guy that I don't have a lot of faith in. I don't know what he's doing there. I really don't know what he's doing in Columbia. Let's be honest. Missouri loses a lot of people from last year. They have quarterback questions. Is it going to be Sean Robinson, the transfer from TCU, or is it going to be somebody else? They do have seven returning starters defensively. 
from a unit that only allowed 19.4 points per game. But I'm not expecting this Missouri offense to play lights out football. I'm not expecting them to be that tough. And I look at this Missouri game, it's a trap game for the Tigers, guys. Right in the middle of SEC play, they've got to now travel out west, out to Utah. They're dropping this game. BYU is getting a quality win over an SEC opponent. Missouri, by no means, is going to be one of the better teams in the SEC East. Expect some growing pains from them in Eli Drinkwitz's first year at the helm. Remember, he took a, he took a jump from App State to Missouri, the Sun Belt to the SEC after one year of head coaching experience. I have my doubts. BYU takes advantage of that. They defeat Missouri, and they defeat a Houston team that will have a very potent passing attack in year two under Dana Holgerson. But again, their defense is my only concern. The Cougars went 4-8 and eight last year. Yes, they returned seven starters defensively. Yes, they have a bunch of transfers coming in, which will bolster that defense, which will give them depth defensively. But once again, at home, I think this is a game where that linebacking core, of all people, steps up for BYU. And they're able to shut down the likes of Clayton Toon and this Cougars offense. Just like that, they started off 1-3. and three. They've won three straight. They are 4-3. and three. Let's make it 5-3 and three going into the bye. I like them to take care of business against Northern Illinois, a team that you never want to underestimate out of the MAC, uh, especially with this game being played in Illinois. It's not a true road game. It's a neutral site game. But they're taking on a Huskies team that went 5-7 and seven last year. If Northern Illinois is fully healthy and they get better QB play out of Ross Bowers, they might give the, Husky, uh, the Cougars a game here. But I think they're rolling. They've got a win over an SEC team. They've won three straight. They've got a win over a good Houston team. They've won four straight. They're five and three. Keep in mind, they're going to be six and three. We've got a win over North Alabama. They get their bye week at the perfect time, going into a huge game at B, uh, Boise State. Huge game at Boise State. And look, BYU's not afraid to play on the Smurf turf. BYU's not afraid to go into Boise and snag a win. They've done it before. They can do it again. It's not impossible. Last year, BYU surprised everybody. They upset the Broncos 28-25. to You look at Boise State this year, they were getting Hank Bachmeyer back. Assuming he's healthy, he's going to be one of the better quarterbacks in the Mountain West, statistically, maybe even in the country. He's got a very deep wide receiver core, and their back seven defensively is very, very strong for Brian Harson and the Broncos. I look at this, and I think this is a game that BYU might be able to get some yards on the ground. They averaged nearly 160 yards per game rushing last year, so maybe they can rack up some yards on the ground this year. But you can't beat BYU on the road solely by running the ball. It's not going to happen. One of their three quarterbacks is going to have to step up in this one, and against a very strong secondary and linebacking core for Boise State, with home field advantage and revenge on their mind, I don't see them pulling off this upset, this upset for the second year in a row. BYU, their four-game winning streak is snapped. They fall to the Broncos. They play San Diego State at home, so Boise State gets revenge over the Cougars, but the Cougars, I believe, get revenge over the Aztecs, who are going through a bit of a change themselves. Yes, they beat BYU 13-3 last year. Beat them by 10. Low-scoring game, very boring game. Brady Hoke now takes over. Again, takes over again for San Diego State as Rocky Long has left to go be the defensive coordinator at New Mexico. This San Diego D State defense, guys, is legit. They returned seven starters. They only allowed 12.7 points per game last year. Key for them is finding consistent, key word in this video, consistent quarterback play. The game's in Provo, revenge on their mind. BYU will score more than three points. Might not score more than 21, but it's going to be enough to get the win. Because San Diego State's not an offense that can light you up either. So they've got to win over San Diego State. We've got to win over North Alabama. They've got seven wins. They're seven and four. So a one and three start has turned into a seven and four record going into their finale against Stanford. And we have them losing to the Cardinal. This is a Stanford team guy, guys, that uh, really I think last year was a fluke, obviously. Four and eight with David Shaw. Are you kidding me? That doesn't happen. It's because of injuries. Stanford was so beat up last year. Now they return nine offensive starters, including their quarterback in Davis Mills. Their secondary is going to be very, very strong, kind of similar to Boise State here in terms of those seven starters back in that back seven being very strong. As long as Stanford is healthy, as long as they're not ravaged by injuries like they were last year, I expect the Cardinal to take care of business at home. So BYU does drop this game to finish the season. 7-5, and five, which is, in fact, the exact same record they had last year before their loss to Hawaii 
which ended their season at 7-6. and six. Look, all things considered, considering the start of the season, considering a very difficult four-game stretch in which three of those games are on the road, and considering a rough four-game stretch to end, road games at Boise and Stanford, the bookends of those final four games, 7-5 and five is a fantastic record. It's better consistency in a way. We don't expect much out of this. You see a four-game win streak. You see them winning six of their final eight games. I see that's a major success, especially if they're able to pull off a win in their bowl game. That's an eight-win season in year five for Kalani Satake. BYU takes another small step forward. The talent is there for them to be more consistent. The talent is there to win seven or eight games in 2020. Can they take advantage of it? Can they utilize it to their advantage? And can the Cougars maybe pull off a major upset in one of those first four games? We want to hear from you down in the comments below. Guys, as always, thank you so much for watching us here at the Gridiron Expert on YouTube. Make sure to continue to like, comment, subscribe, and share these videos, as well as check out everything down in the description below. We've got exclusive college football news, offers, content that you do not want to miss on our website, thegridironexpert.com. We've got content on our social media pages over on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram with updates daily that you do not want to miss. And once again, as always, thank you so much for watching, and we will see you next time right here on The Gridiron Expert.